In this video tutorial, I am going to show you how to perform normality test using SPSS. Before looking into SPSS and how to calculate a normality test, first of all, we see what is a normality test and why it is important. Many of the parametric tests like correlation, regression, t-tests and analysis of variance are based on the assumption that the data follows a normal distribution. That is, it is assumed that the populations from which the samples are taken are normally distributed. The assumption of a normality is especially critical when constructing reference intervals for variables. Normality and other assumptions should be taken seriously for when these assumptions do not hold, it is impossible to draw accurate and reliable conclusions about reality. In the sense, normality is important when we run tests like correlation, regression, t-test, analysis of a variance. So now we'll see how to calculate normality test using SPSS. So here is my data on uh, returns and the traded quantity of a particular stock. So to perform normality test, we need to go to analyze descriptive statistics and in descriptive statistics, Click explore and select a variable. Here we are taking a variable of a return and go to the statistics. Descriptives confidence interval mean 95%. So we are trying to check at a 95% confidence interval. That means our significance level is 5%. And here I check the outliers. That is, select the outliers. Click continue. And next is a plot. Click on plots. At this point of time, we don't need stem and leaf, so remove this and we need a select histogram, select histogram, normality plots with the tests, then continue, click OK. SPSS gives you a results in this format, so it first gives you the case processing summary, descriptives, extreme values, the test of a normality histogram and normal QQ plot return then a box plot. So these all are given in one go. Now we'll check each and every item and how to test whether the given data is normally distributed or not. So as we know when mean is less than a median the data is left skewed. So in this case it is left skewed. Now for a normal, to test a normality, we have a various series of steps. So I'll show you the steps first. First, calculated skewness and cut resist statistics should be near to zero. We'll see what the result of our analysis. So skewness is 0 0.097 and cut resist is minus 2.43, which are near to zero. Skewness is 0 0.097 and cut resist is 0.243 which are near to 0. This our first assumption is valid. Next second, manually calculate the z values of skewness and kurtosis. As SPSS does not give you z values of skewness and kurtosis, we are supposed to calculate them manually. So to calculate the z scores or z values, z values of skewness equals to skewness statistic divided by standard error of a skewness. And to calculate the z value of a kurtosis, kurtosis statistic by standard error of a kurtosis. Skewness statistic and standard error of skewness, kurtosis statistic and standard error of a kurtosis statistics are available in our SPSS output. Here you can see skewness is 0 0.097 and standard error standard error is 1.159 whereas kurtosis static is minus 0.243 and standard error is 0.37 317. So manually we calculate the z values. Z values of skewness is 0 0.097 divided by 0 0.159. So keep note our z value of skewness is 0 0.610. Z value of skewness is 0 0.610. Whereas for cutters is 0 0.2. 
0.43 divided by 0.317 and it is 0.76 so one is 0.61 and another is 0.76 now how is it we are going to interpret these z values now rule is skewness and cutters z values should be between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 at 5 percent significance level in our case skewness has got a z score of 0 0.60 here and cutters has got z score of point or z value of a point Seven one, so which are between minus one point nine six and one point nine six plus one point nine six. That's five percent significance level. So our second assumption is also valid. Next, what is that we are supposed to do? Third, normality statistics. Here, if you look at the SPSS output, you can see the normality tests, tests of normality, Kolmogorov Smirnov test and Shapiro will test. So by default, SPSS gives you these two outputs, Kolmogorov's Miro test and Shapiro will test. And in this, we have to look at the significance level, that is a power value or a probability value. In this case, it is 0 0.200 and here it is 0 0.089. Now, how is it we are going to interpret the significance or a power values of Kolmogorov's Miro test and Shapiro will test? And furthermore, which of these two tests we need to consider? Either we need to consider Kolmogorov's Miro test or Shapiro will test. Third, normality statistics test. For tests on samples of n is equals to 3 to 2000, use Shapiro will test. For those of n greater than 2000, use Kolmogorov Smirnov test. As our data is between 2000, that is, we our data, in our case, we have a total number of observations. Our total number of observations are 234, which is less than 2000. So, when data points or number of observations are less than 2000, we need to consider Shapiro will test. So, in the Shapiro will test, the significance is 0 0.088. Now, what does 0 0.088 mean, and how is it we are going to interpret this? When testing for a normality, probabilities, that is significant value, is greater than 0 0.05 mean that the data are normal probabilities that is power value or significant value is less than 0 0.05 mean the data are not normal in our case the probability value or the significant value is 0 0.088 which is more than 0 0.05 so our data is normal just we recheck again Probabilities, that is a power value, if significance value is greater than 0 0.05, mean the data are normal. And our result shows the significance value as 0 0.088, which means our data is normal. To know the skewness, we just check a histogram. So the histogram shows the data is more or less normally distributed. And next what we have is a normal QQ plot on the return. How to interpret a QQ plot? Finally, observe histogram, normal QQ plot. The QQ plot is quantile, quantile plot. So the histogram provides information about the skewness and cutters. The QQ plot provides a visual comparison of the sample quantiles to the corresponding theoretical quantiles. If the observations follow approximately a normal distribution, the resulting plot should be roughly straight line with a positive slope and note deviations from this would indicate possible departure from a normal distribution now we look at a qq plot so in our qq plot the straight line is a normal frequency values and the circular values are observed frequency values in our case this observed frequency values lies exactly or very close to the normal curve so we can easily say that we can say that data is normally distributed and in a box plot we have only one observation which is the outlier else all the observations are within the box plot so the data is symmetric and we'll check with another example so go 
go to once again we go to analyze descriptive statistics explore at this time I take a variable traded quantity as all the statistics are already selected so just we press continue the plots continue and click ok so here is another example so you can see the skewness is 2.844 it is a right skewed because the positive and kurtesis is 11.941 so we will calculate the z values the value is 2.844 divided by 0.159 so this is 17.86886 which is beyond our limit of 1.96 so data is not normal and second is vertices is 11.941 divided by 0.317 and in this case the vertices is the z value of a vertices is 37.68 which is far beyond the or for beyond the assumption assumed value or z score of 1.96 so with these two cases we can say that in this in this particular set the data is not normal so we to confirm further we move to the test of normality in test of normality as sample is 284 we look for shapiro wilk test and shapiro wilk test shows the significant value of 0.00 Zero, which is less than 0.05. That means the data is not normal. As a significance or a power value is less than 0.05, the data is not normal. And a histogram also shows you this is a right skew of a data. So most of the observations are here, and data is skewed to its right. And a normal QQ plot of a traded quantity, you can see the observed. Values are not linear to the normal frequency or normal values. So this also shows that the data is not normal. And if you look at the box plot, here you can see majority of many of the variables, observed variables, are outside the box plot. Or we can see these are the outliers. So this is how we. Test for normality using SPSS. To have a brief overview, we can say that to perform a normality test in SPSS, first calculate the skewness and kurtosis statistic should be near zero. Second, manually calculate the z values of skewness and kurtosis. Z values of skewness equals to skewness statistic by standard error of skewness, and z value of kurtosis equals to kurtosis statistic by standard error of kurtosis. And the rule is skewness and kurtosis z values should be between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 at 5 percent significance level. Then only the data is normal. And third, look at the normality statistic test. For tests on the sample of n equals to 3 or 2000, use Shapiro Wilk test. For those of n is greater than 2000, use Kolmogorov Smirnov test. When testing for a normality. Probability is that is p or power value or significant value is greater than 0.05 mean the data are normal. Probabilities or p or significant value is less than 0.05 mean the data are not normal. Finally, to understand we need to look at the histogram, normal QQ plot and box plot. So on a QQ plot, the visual comparison of a sample contains. The corresponding theoretical quantiles. If the observations follow approximately a normal distribution, the resulting plot should be roughly a straight line with a positive slope. This is how you are supposed to calculate normality tests using SPSS. Hope this video tutorial helps you to perform normality tests using SPSS with ease. Thank you.